Good morning, Andrew, and good morning, Coronacation. Welcome to day 19. Hey, Andrew, Easter's just around the corner, so I had a couple questions for you. Um, what, what did you call um, that bunny that had a whole lot of money? And uh, where did that bunny like to go out to eat? And, and what was his name? I just remember he had really bad lice. Anyway, um, looking forward to hearing from you. See you soon. Good morning, Coronacation, and good morning, Corey. Hey, I am so glad to be here with you again today. And, you know, it's April, so we're prepping for Easter, and Easter's coming. Um, and co like Corey said, I got some jokes for you. So, what do you call a bunny with money? Huh? What do you call a bunny with money? A million hair. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, here's another, here's another. Okay, where does the Easter Bunny like to eat out? Huh? Huh? IHOP. Get it? IHOP? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, gosh. I'm so good at these. Okay, one more. One more. This one's good. This one's real good. Are you ready, Corey? Are you ready, Coronacation? What do you call a bunny with lice? Ooh. You ready? Are you ready for this? Are you ready? Bugs Bunny. You call him Bugs Bunny. Get it? Bugs? Bugs Bunny? Come on, that's funny. Come on. Well, hey there, Coronacation. I hope everybody's uh, doing well, staying safe inside your your home. Hope your family is doing well. And uh, I miss seeing all your smiling faces um, and, and even some that are frowning. I miss seeing all the faces. The faces are good. And, uh, and right now, um, I'm, I'm only seeing a couple of faces uh, every day. So <clears throat> I'm really excited uh, that I get a chance to, to chat with you for just a second. Um, I want to share with you just a little bit of encouragement um, one of my favorite verses, <clears throat> and it's the verse that I used actually to name my son, Micah. Um, and, uh, and it's his, it's the verse that we kind of gave to him, Micah 6, 8. Um, and it's, uh, the Lord has shown you what is good. He has told you what he requires of you. You must act with justice. You must love to show mercy and you must live, must be humble as you live in the, in the sight of your God. So, um, you know, I think uh, being humble there at the, at the end of it is, is a big deal. Um, and, uh, and it's putting others first, uh, I believe, when uh, you feel like you deserve more. And, and, uh, and I believe that's what we're, what we're talking about potentially this month. And, uh, and so <clears throat> um, I think that's a big deal to have. God has shown us everything. <clears throat> he's, he's told us what he requires of us in, in his word. Um, we, we're supposed to, to uh, act with justice. We're supposed to show mercy to others, um, which we're doing by staying home. And, uh, and, and then uh, we must be humble and put others first, even though we deserve more. So uh, uh, I hope that encourages you today. I hope everybody's staying safe and um, not bouncing off the walls. I, I certainly am. I'm bouncing all the time. Um, but uh, I can't wait to see everybody um, back at, uh, at Southern Hills. And, um, and uh, thanks for, for listening to me. Yeah, for just a little bit today. I'll see you later. How did Darth Vader know Luke's Christmas gifts? He felt his presence. Hey guys, it's me again, sitting here with my son Liam. This weekend, we get to read all about Jesus uh, praying before he was arrested in the garden. Um, so, me and Liam are ready. Grab your Bible, and uh, yep, he's got his. Grab your Bible, turn to Matthew 26, 36, and we're going to dive in and see what this story is all about. See you on the other side, guys. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, 
we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Matthew, chapter 26, verses 36 through 56. For months, the Jewish religious leaders had been plotting to silence Jesus. He called us pretenders, snakes. On the Sunday before Passover, Jesus entered Jerusalem to great cheers from the crowds. Blessed, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. 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 But even as the crowds swarmed in to see what Jesus would do and say, one of Jesus's closest followers, Judas, went to the religious leaders with a very sneaky plan. What are you willing to give me if I deliver him over to you? How about a cool 30 pieces of silver? Jesus knew these plans, but he also knew that his mission was to face those who hated him and let them take him without defending himself. He prepared his closest friends for this during a Passover meal and then afterwards led them out of the city toward the Mount of Olives. Judas had already left them. In a little while, you will no longer see me. Then after a little while, you will see me. I came from the Father and entered the world. Now I am leaving the world and going back to the Father. The air cooled as the evening darkened. This very night, you will all turn away because of me. Peter, the most outspoken of Jesus' friends, quickened his step and tightened his hand on the sword he was carrying. All the others may turn away because of you, but I never will. What I'm about to tell you is true. It will happen tonight. Before the rooster crows, you will say three times that you don't know me. I may have to die with you, but I will never say I don't know you. Me too. Same. <sighs> By the time Jesus and his friends reached the Garden of Gethsemane, they were exhausted. Sit here while I go over there and pray. As the other disciples settled in on the cold, rough ground, Jesus took Peter, James, and John along with him to a grove of ancient olive trees. The weight of what was coming pressed down on him. My soul is very sad. I feel close to death. Stay here. Keep watch with me. We're here for you. We got this. Prayers. The three friends found seats among the knotted tree roots, and Jesus went on a little further. Then suddenly, he fell down on the ground, face first into the dirt. Words poured out from deep inside. My father, if it is possible, take this cup of suffering away from me. But let what you want be done not what I want. After a short time, Jesus returned to his friends. They had all fallen into restless sleep. Jesus touched Peter's arm. Huh, what? Huh? Just, uh, we're just, uh, we're just praying. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray. Then you won't fall into sin when you are tempted. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. We'll stay awake this time. Got you covered. Again, Jesus threw himself down to pray. His pain was so deep, blood and sweat beaded on his forehead. My father, is it possible for this cup to be taken away? But if I must drink it, may what you want be done. Jesus returned to his friends once more to find them still sleeping. The agony in his spirit forced Jesus to lay his heart out to God once more. He prayed the desperate words again, begging God to take away what was coming, and at the same time, revealing his complete trust in God's plan. Let what you want be done, not what I want. At last, Jesus knew the time had come. He returned to find Peter, James, and John buried deep in sleep. Beyond them, his other followers slept too. Are you still sleeping and resting? The disciples struggled through a fog of sleep, blinking and yawning. Below them, torchlight showed an angry mob climbing up the hill. The men were waving swords and clubs, shouting as they came. Look, the hour has come. The Son of Man is about to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. Here comes the one who is handing me over to them. Jesus' friends staggered to their feet, and Peter clutched his sword. As the mob marched closer, they could see the man in front of the mob. It was their friend Judas. Judas? What are you doing? 
The mob had been sent by the Jewish religious leaders. Judas had already explained to them that he would greet Jesus with a kiss, so they would know exactly which man to arrest. Greetings, teacher. Judas ignored the other disciples and went directly to Jesus, kissing him on the cheek in greeting. Jesus drew back and looked Judas directly in the face. Friend, do what you came to do. The mob surged forward as the disciples just stood there, frozen and confused. As men grabbed Jesus, Peter suddenly sprang to life, awkwardly drawing his sword. Should we use our swords? Peter didn't wait for an answer, but he struck out wildly. His blade sliced right through the ear of the high priest's servant. Oh! Stop this! Jesus touched the servant's ear. Immediately, he was healed. Put your sword back in its place. Do you think I can't ask my father for help? He would send an army of more than 70,000 angels right away. But then how would the scriptures come true? They say it must happen in this way. Jesus turned back to the mob and the men who held him. They hovered there, uncertain, in the flickering light of their torches. Am I leading a band of armed men against you? Do you have to come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I sat in the temple courtyard teaching, and you didn't arrest me. But all this has happened so that the words of the prophets would come true. No one could respond to Jesus. Instead, they arrested him and led him away. And his friends who said they'd be with him through anything ran away. Jesus made the choice that would bring life to everyone, but that would cost him everything. That was such a great example of Jesus choosing us. He really was the best example of love and humility. And man, that's an exciting lesson. I'm really, it's gonna be so cool to dive into that on Sunday. But before we wrap up today, Andrew, we need to play a game. And so this is a game that you can play along at home. It's real easy. It involves cookies. You know, sometimes you dive in and grab a cookie and it's a chocolate chip cookie. Other times it surprises you and it's a raisin cookie. So you're gonna have to look at these cookies and do a couple of trivia questions to see if it's a chocolate chip cookie or a raisin cookie. Good luck, I hope you beat Andrew again. Here we go. I'll go too. Oh, this is, that's a chocolate chip. That's a chocolate chip cookie. Let's see. Oh gosh, this is not this is not a good start, Corey. Oh, chocolate chip. That's a chocolate chip. Mm, those are those look like tiny chocolate chips though. I yes, finally. All right, I'm I'm one and one. Oh, that's too many. Uh, that, there's no way you can have too many cookies. But that's that's chocolate chip. It's just hard to tell. Yes. All right, I'm two. I'm two. Two for three. Those look like raisins. I'm gonna go raisins. Here we go. Aw, yeah. All right, here we go, here we go. Let's see, let's see. That looks like a batch of chocolate chip cookies. Chocolate chip. Chocolate. It was. Which has more calories? Chocolate chip. Oh, that's a trick. Oh, no raisin. Oh gosh, I should have stayed with the first one. Duh, they're chocolate chip cookies. Which has more sodium? Raisins. They salt dries them out. Boom! Um, here we, oh. Chocolate chip? It's kind of like blueberries. Chocolate chip. Yeah. This kind of look like blueberry muffins are so big. What percent? Americans say chocolate chip is their favorite. Uh, 56. Oh, that was close. I was, that's pretty close. Um, chocolate chip. Chocolate chip. Oatmeal raisin. I said raisin. Chocolate chip or oatmeal raisin. Okay, that's it. How'd you guys do? 